next. At least 25 people were killed and 50 others were injured in a convoy waiting at a checkpoint. Ukraine blames Russia for the attack, but the Kremlin claims Ukrainian forces are behind it. The attacks come as Russian President Vladimir Putin held a signing ceremony today, officially annexing four Moscow-occupied regions in Ukraine in spite of global criticism. CBS News foreign correspondent Charlie Daggett has more. The day President Putin finalized that land grab, there's been a horrific missile attack not far from here on a humanitarian convoy in Zaporizhia. Dozens are feared dead in an elaborate signing ceremony at the Kremlin and a rally at Red Square. Russia is trying to make the annexation of the four regions look official. It is a dramatic escalation, and here's why. To Putin's mind, those territories are now on Russian soil, which he has vowed to defend by any means necessary. He has threatened to use nuclear weapons and says he's not bluffing. Few here, including President Zelensky, think that he is bluffing. It might mean a small tactical nuclear weapon used somewhere on the battlefield is a terrifying demonstration of power. Yet, in the past two days, Russia has already stepped up missile attacks away from those Russian-occupied regions. Bodies of victims scattered on the ground in Zaporizhia. They were headed to Russian-held territories to help loved ones escape. Here in Dnipro itself, we've had missile attacks overnight, huge explosions hitting civilian areas. That is the second night in a row this city and others have been targeted. Charlie Daggett, CBS News, Dnipro, Ukraine. Joining us with more is senior research fellow at the Quincy Institute for Responsible Statecraft, Anatole Levin. Anatole, thanks for joining us. Just to start, in Putin's mind, these four Russian-occupied regions are now Russia's, but Ukraine and Western allies say they will not acknowledge the annexation as legitimate. Can you explain what this all means and how this will impact the war itself and the outside response to it moving forward? Well, uh, it means that Putin is now, uh, has ruled out any negotiated peace settlement to this conflict uh, and is absolutely determined to hold these territories for Russia. Now, how far he will go um, in defending them or holding them, uh, we don't know. Uh, what is clear is that he is going to use this uh, as uh, part of his excuse or attempt to, to, to mobilize Russian citizens to fight in the war, uh, an effort which, of course, is beating great resistance in, in Russian society. Uh, it should be noted, though, that, of course, compared to his ambitions at the start of the war, uh, this is drastically scaled down. You know, remember that the beginning of the war, uh, he hoped to uh, basically conquer the whole of Ukraine, replace the Ukrainian government, turn it, Ukraine into a Russian client state. All that is over. Um, his hopes of capturing most of the east and south of Ukraine now appear to be over. So he's just trying to pretend to the Russian people that this disastrous war has been some sort of success by permanently grabbing, you know, limited amounts of, of Ukrainian territory. Well, the U.S. plans to impose new economic sanctions on Russia over its illegal annexation. But, you know, the question remains, how effective will these sanctions actually be? We have seen that Putin has not demonstrated any particular interest in what the West seems to want. Um, how effective can these sanctions be? Well, uh, you know, the West has already imposed uh, the most severe uh, sanctions in, in history on, on Russia for its previous actions. It's not entirely clear to me how much further it can go. Uh, there is also a question of China's response. So far, China has actually been very cautious towards this war, um, which it clearly did not want. Uh, it hasn't you know, gone along with imposing sanctions on Russia, but it also has not given actual support to Russia. Uh, so, but if sanctions are greatly in, uh, are further intensified, then it, it is possible that China might, you know, move, move to greater support because, after all, the Biden administration has made its hostility to China ab abundantly clear. Anatole, how real is the nuclear threat from Russia now that Moscow has these four regions? I still think it is unlikely that Moscow, you know, would deliberately move. To a planned nuclear strike because 
uh, A, it might not actually work, and B, um, the, 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 the political loss to Russia in the world would be colossal. Uh, but of course, um, you know, as people have said, you know, there is always the risk of an accidental escalation, um, you know, with uh, warning steps being taken, which then lead to reaction on the other side, like the Cuban Missile Crisis, so that I think the risk of uh, accidental nuclear war has undoubtedly got even greater as a result of this, this latest Russian step. Well, today, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky announced the signing of Ukraine's application for accelerated accession to NATO. Now, this is something that the nation has wanted for a while, and it would offer them Article 5 protection. Anatol, it is all easier said than done, as you well know. Tell us about the hurdles that Ukraine still faces in actually joining NATO. That there is one huge hurdle, which is that... Western countries have made it, existing NATO members, including the United States, have made it absolutely clear that they themselves will not fight to defend Ukraine. They will not send their troops to, to, to defend Ukraine. That's what an Article 5 guarantee involves. Uh, and uh, previously, President Zelensky said um, back in March that before the war, he had asked NATO countries uh, if they could guarantee that within five years, Ukraine would be in NATO, and they all refused, which is why he then offered a, a treaty of neutrality with guarantees. Well, you know, the, the opposition of NATO countries to sending their own troops to a direct war with Russia remains overwhelming. So I honestly don't see how Ukraine can at that point join, join NATO, uh, unless there is a peace settlement with Russia, which after today's Russian action looks even more impossible. More than seven months now into this particular uh, part of the conflict. Anatole, even Anatole, thanks very much for sharing your insight with us. It's a pleasure. Thank you.